<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. People, what is the strangest, most unexplainable thing that has happened to you while home alone? Not home alone, but only one on the right side of the house. I went to my mom's bathroom to wash my hands and saw a pair of feet behind the half-open door. She laughed and said very funny, Ma, I see you, then finished up and left. I bumped into my mother in the kitchen unpacking, nobody else was in the house. I'm glad whatever was behind the door didn't peek out. When I was younger, I used to live in this super old, shitty house in the middle of the woods. There was a small clearing with an average sized yard, and the rest was thick wood. One night I was walking up to our gate to go inside, and I saw a very tall figure looking in my bedroom window. My light was on, which was weird since I hadn't been in there or turned it on, so I could see the figure with its face and hands pressed up against my window. Whatever or whoever it was must have heard me because they looked in my direction before booking it to the back of the yard and presumably into the woods since there was nowhere else to go and the backyard area wasn't fenced in. I never slept in that room again. Back in high school, I'd usually be up all night playing games. I had a large dog at the time that would sleep in my room at night. It was 2 AM, and I was finally headed to bed, but my dog wasn't with me, so I ventured out to find him. I made my way across the house to the kitchen slash dining room combo. I'm standing in the only door frame that leads to that side of the house. We had an island in the kitchen with a stool that the junk mail was usually kept on. So I walk up, call for my dog, and see him walk from behind the island to behind the dining room table set, knocking all the junk mail down as he did so. I huff and flip on the light, no dog. I freak out, scramble back across the house, and end up finding him in my parents' room. I regaled the story the next day to my parents and younger sister, who often claimed to see stuff in the house. My sister pipes up and goes, oh, that's the tall black thing. Yeah, sometimes it likes to crawl around on all fours. Big nope. I grew up in a very rural area, our house was on the end of a dead-end road in the middle of Midwest farm country. In high school, I was in cross country and track and found it easiest to run in the late evenings on nights when there wasn't practice. One night, which was fairly well lit by the moon, I was running the last quarter mile to my house, and I saw someone else running towards me on the road from the direction of my house. I live on a dead end road. There is nothing but farm fields behind it, and it definitely wasn't my mom running. It surprised me so much that I stopped for a second to consider what I was seeing. I remember exactly what the runner was wearing, and I watched her run another five or six strides towards me before she disappeared or blended into the night like the predator or some such. It could have been exhaustion or dehydration, I guess, but I've run a lot farther and a lot longer than I did that night without seeing anyone materialize and evaporate. I never did again, either on that road or anywhere else. It was the scariest thing that ever happened to me. I ran home crying panic tears, and I am not ashamed to tell you about it. I couldn't bring myself to run at night again for a month. I saw a doppelganger of my mom a few years ago, and I think she heard mine. I was sitting in my bed and looked up when I heard her coming up the stairs. She walked by my door, looking straight at me with no expression, and walked into her room and closed the door. I'd said hi as she walked, but I figured whatever, she didn't hear me, or maybe she was getting something from her room. Then, about five seconds later, she yells up the stairs from downstairs and says, did you call me? And I am not ashamed to say I freaked the duck out. She came upstairs, looked down the hall, and said, did you close my door? I didn't, and neither did she, she never closed that door because one of our cats primarily lived in her bedroom, and so she always kept the door open so the cat could come and go as she pleased. And it wasn't just closed as if the wind had shut it, it was fully closed, and the windows were shut. Ma said she had very clearly heard me yell, hey mom, come here from upstairs. I had done no such thing. I'm never entirely sure what I believe and what I don't, but I was totally sober, not tired, and it wasn't some movement out of the corner of the eye thing. I have aphantasia, which is relevant to the story. I can't visualize things, and I have no visual memory. I remember the things I see by having a constant narration in my head, and I can remember what I thought. So, my little brother was always terrified of the basement and would not, for the life of him, go down there. I was also a bit older, so I had to be braver. I was always the one sent down to get stuff. My brother and I were talking about the basement one day, and I was prying about why he was so scared. He would barricade the door at night and stuff. He told me he sometimes hears things from down there, scratching and weird sounding talking in some language. I was immediately alarmed and told him someone must be sneaking in through the door down there. He said, what door? 
There's no door down there. He even brought up the fact that I can never remember anything visual, but I argued back that he hasn't even been down there for years. We argued back and forth. I went downstairs and came back up, proud to declare that there was indeed a door down there. He got really pale and upset and asked my dad if there was a door in the basement. Dad laughed and said, a door to what? It's underground, of course not. I'm getting super mad. I know I can't remember things idly, but I just checked. Our little argument kept going a bit, with me trying to get him to go down with me. Finally, he did. No door. Four concrete walls. I wailed, but I've been inside. My brother and I ran upstairs and barricaded the door, and neither of us would go down again. I was taking care of my parents' house in the woods of Colorado. I woke up in the middle of the night to this black figure standing over me making a gurgling noise, not loud, it sounded like it was far away. But the figure was inches away from me. I'm not a stranger to sleep paralysis, the demon in the corner type thing, but this was different. I couldn't move, which carried over, but I was trying, it felt like I was tied down. My vision started to go red, almost like when you get injured in a video game. That blood effect that moves in from the edges. All of a sudden, the figure fell on me. I could feel the weight pressing down on my chest, I couldn't breathe, and I could feel my blood struggle to escape underneath it. Then it rolled off of me onto the other side of the bed and started laughing. Quietly, like it had just remembered an inside joke. But it was laughing at mock versions of other people's laughs, my mom's, my dad's, and a few of my friends. It started to distort, it became the silhouette of my mom five years earlier, and the laugh became a touch clearer, closer to hers. Then its hand slid over in the bed very slowly, like it was nervous to touch me. It grabbed my hand and held on, fingers interlaced, it felt like solid fog, and it rolled like there was something liquid moving in waves underneath the surface. It kept holding on and kept laughing. Eventually the red in my vision faded into full black, and I woke up almost a full 20 hours later. My body ached, it felt like my spine had been taken out and replaced. Moving was a chore, I had to relearn how to do all the simple things over the next hour or two until it all crashed back into me. I try not to remember it too much, in case it comes back. I grew up about 20 minutes outside of town. One night, when I was about 11, I got up to get a glass of water. The water came from the fridge, and I always kept a glass beside the fridge for me at night. In the kitchen, there was a big window above the sink that overlooked the front yard, which included just fields, etc. It was very dark outside, and I could only see a little way out from the light I had turned on in the kitchen while filling my glass. There was a trampoline out in the front yard of the house, which was a decent distance from the window. So anyway, that night, while drinking my water, I was standing back from the window but still looking outside. I then noticed some movement in the dark that didn't make sense. It took a minute for my brain to realize that it was someone bouncing on the trampoline. I really started to focus on it, trying to make sense of what I was looking at. As I was doing this, the figure slowly stopped bouncing, and I could tell it must have noticed me, and I could feel all the hairs on my body stand up. An instant later, whatever it was moved really fast towards the window, almost like instantaneously, it was looking at me through the window. I only looked for a second because this all happened very fast, but from what I recall, my brain registered it as a human face, but something didn't feel right. I took my cup with me to my room and had a bad time trying to sleep. I never turned on the light while getting water at night again, and I never looked out the window while drinking the water either. So many weird things happened in that home. When I was a kid, my mom and I lived in a house with her friend and her daughter. This house wasn't really weird or haunted at all. You never got the sense that something bad or evil could have happened there, and it wasn't an old place, either. But for whatever reason, almost every night I would wake up and see the silhouette of some absolutely horrible creature standing in my doorway. It almost looked like a spider perched on the outside of my door, covering the whole thing, but it was way too dark to get a clear picture of it. I'm not a stranger to sleep paralysis, but I remember very vividly that while I was quite capable of moving, talking, or anything else, I was so absolutely terrified of what was in that doorway that I just couldn't. I'd often pee myself because the thought of getting out of bed and confronting that thing scared me so much. Anyway, whenever we had sleepovers, I'd make sure they never slept in my room because I was worried one of my friends would get attacked by whatever that thing was. A few years later, we moved houses, and I hadn't had any incidents involving whatever was in my doorway for a while. So I had a sleepover, and since I had a huge room, everyone could sleep in there. Well, that night, it decided to come back. I tossed a pillow off my bed at one of my friends to wake him up, just to see if they could see it too. I figured if something happened, we'd all at least be able to fight it off. He did see it. 
I watched him look up at the doorway. He sat up, barely managed to get a word out, and the thing made this horrible noise and disappeared down the hallway. He started bawling his eyes out, and everyone else woke up. I never saw it again after that. The house I lived in was new, but the house that was there before had burned down. The neighboring property had homemade headstones with just first names like James. The place was on 10 acres in the middle of the woods. One night I heard barking, but it wasn't either one of our two dogs. My brother and I came out of our rooms, and there was a Doberman pincher in front of our parents' room barking at us. We both blinked and looked at each other. We were scared out of our minds. My brother went to his room, and the dog disappeared. Naturally, my little brother slept in my room that night. The next morning, we asked our parents if they heard barking, and they said they didn't hear anything, not even our dogs. I truly can't explain how we both saw the same dog or how it would have gotten past our dogs and into the house. Another time I was in the yard playing around, and in the trees, I saw a Victorian woman in the full gown they used to wear. She was floating halfway up a 100-foot tall tree. That house freaked me out, but the neighbor's property was worse. It had those headstones, but it also had a super small house with no windows at all. The owner came up twice a year. Never stayed long. We called it the murder cabin because it served no purpose, no water, no power, nothing. There are always weird things happening. Once we moved, it was like the air cleared around me. Guess that's just the way it goes when you live in a historical town in the woods where horrible things happened. I never had weird stuff happen to me until I moved to Tennessee. The first thing that happened was that I had a small globe sitting on my bedside table. I sat down on my bed one morning and had a terrible feeling come over me. My globe flew across the room and shattered. I was all alone, and when I looked back at my bedside table, my globe was there and not broken. It scared the shit out of me. My whole family got weird vibes from that house. Years later, I was living in my own home down the road, and I was hearing someone talk to me, but I couldn't make out what was being said. I chalked it up to being jittery when home alone, way out in the country, until one day my boyfriend, my four-year-old, and I are in the kitchen making lunch. I hear the voice again, and my daughter looks right at me and says, what did he say? My boyfriend hadn't said anything, and when I looked at him, he said he had never heard anything. Three nights later, I just laid down for bed, and I felt the other side of my bed move. I think it was my daughter climbing into bed with me when I remember being home alone. I jump out of bed and switch the lights on, and my bed, the foam kind, has the imprint of a large person on it and is slowly going back to its regular shape. I did not sleep at all that night. There is so much scary stuff that has happened to me and my family since moving here. My brother and I were home from school because we were sick. We had a craft room in the mostly unfinished basement, and we were down there playing with miniatures. Around noon, we heard, very clearly, the front door unlock, open, close, and someone walk in shoes across the foyer tile to the kitchen and turn on the sink. They then turned off the sink and went up the stairs to the second floor. I figured it was my stepdad and called my mom to let her know he had come home for lunch. She had just gotten off the phone with my stepdad, and he was in his office at work. She called him back, and he came ripping home while we hid in the basement. Although we never heard the person come back down the stairs, we didn't find anyone in the house. I had a giant Bernese mountain dog. Thing never barked his whole life. Was the least aggressive animal I've ever met. Unless he was pawing at you for pets. The point is calm, quiet, and gentle. One night, I was home alone as a child, 9-10-ish, I honestly don't remember exactly. I hear a dog, after all, it couldn't be mine, barking up a storm. I didn't think much of it. Until he was at the sliding glass door, all hair on end, barking his ass off. I let him in, and he physically shoved me back, then stood between me and the door for five of the scariest minutes of my life. He just growled and barked the whole time. Wouldn't let me be anywhere near the door. Then, like a ducking light, he just turned around, licked me, and laid down. I have no ducking earthly clue what was out there, but it wasn't getting to me. My kids were at school and my husband was at work, so it was just the cat and me at home. I was sitting on the couch in the family room with my daughter's cat, Angel, who was sleeping on the cushion to my left while I was working on my laptop. Two-story house with a semi-open floor plan downstairs. I'm facing the front door, the house is quiet, with no TV or music on. Angel suddenly sits up, looks over towards the door, jumps off the couch, and walks under the archway that separates the foyer, living room, and dining room area from the family room and kitchen. She sits down in the middle of the foyer and looks up and over her shoulder to the left, towards the top of the stairs. I can't see the stairs because I'm in the family room. 
Very slowly, she starts to move her head, like she's tracking someone walking down the stairs. She does this all the way down until she's looking directly at the front door. I'm sitting on the couch, frozen, afraid to breathe. There is not a sound in the house. About 10 seconds later, she starts moving her head again, like she's tracking someone walking back up the stairs. She is quiet the whole time, doesn't meow, and the only movement is her head following whatever it is that only she is seeing. He follows it all the way up, sits there a few more seconds, and then comes back over, jumps up on the couch next to me, and goes back to sleep. I didn't move from that couch until it was time for me to leave to pick up my kids from school. This just happened yesterday, actually. Not home alone, I suppose, but the only one awake. My wife was asleep upstairs in our room, and my daughter was upstairs in hers. All doors closed, and sounds from the upstairs rooms are very muffled normally. I get up from the couch to fill my water cup and hear a very distinct, very loud male cough and throat clearing from the landing upstairs, then footsteps moving down the upstairs hall. Immediately turn ice cold with goosebumps and run upstairs. Daughter asleep in her room, wife asleep in ours. There is nothing in the office or bathroom upstairs. There's an attic door, but it's latched from the outside. I checked the basement for good measure and found nothing there. Before we bought this house a few years ago, the previous owner's husband died upstairs. I don't believe in ghosts, but we've had a few weird incidents up there since moving in, mostly involving my daughter seeing someone who isn't there. I attribute it to a two-year-old's imagination, and maybe I was just tired yesterday. If not, he seems nice, I suppose? His widow said he was a great-grandfather, and my daughter is in the room his granddaughter slept in. My daughter isn't scared of whatever she might see. I was probably 13 or 14, my parents had friends over, and all the adults went somewhere. A Christmas party, I think? Because the adults left, I was stuck watching three dogs, which was pretty easy. Let them out when they go to the door, check their water, and prepare stuff. Since it was around Christmas, we had these fake glass candles on the windows and plugged them in for decoration. Possibly around midnight, I was laying on the couch with the dogs watching videos when they started getting all weird and staring at the door. Every few minutes, they'd get up and start barking frantically at it. Originally, it freaked me the duck out, and I looked out the windows to see if someone was in the yard but didn't see anyone. So I thought it was an animal. But they kept doing it, and it pissed me off, and I just yelled at them each time. Around the sixth time of barking, I got up to pull them away from the door when the candle on the window next to it was suddenly thrown across the room, breaking the glass, and I remember the power shutting off after it was yanked. The dogs were barking more, and I immediately booked it upstairs and slammed my door with the dogs behind me. I had called and messaged the adults, but they weren't responding. The dogs were staring at my door all night, but nothing else happened. I fell asleep, and my parents yelled at me for the broken candle the next morning when they got back. I still don't know what happened that night, but I probably shit myself. I was alone with my wife in a modern cabin in the middle of the woods on a gorgeous and lazy summer afternoon. The piece was shattered by an unseen commotion and crash that shook the building for a few seconds. The best way I can describe it is as if the house was a bell that had been rung with us inside. The peaceful sounds of a summertime forest returned as if nothing had happened. My brain immediately thought a tree had fallen on the house. I went out to investigate and found no signs of anything striking the house. No damage to the siding, roof, windows, etc. In any capacity I surveyed the nearby tree line and could not spot any felled trees that hadn't been there before. So we checked inside and again found everything intact and as it should be. I spent hours looking for anything to explain what just happened. The nearest neighbor was miles away, and earthquakes are extremely rare where we were, and I looked up to confirm there was no seismic activity that day because this bothers me so much. To this day, I have no idea what force was exerted on that building to make it shake and reverberate the way we experienced it. Nor have I been able to identify the crashing sound we heard before the house trembled. I tore that property apart and found no explanation. What bothers me most is how isolated the experience was for my wife and me. Our dogs made no reaction, and nothing appeared to spook the wildlife. Whatever happened targeted us specifically. I was in my college apartment, and my roommate had just moved out. Her room was directly across from mine, with the living room between us. I had cleaned out her room and then closed the door. I left my bedroom door open when I went to take a shower one night. My bathroom was connected to my bedroom. I also happened to leave the bathroom door open. While I was in the shower, I thought I heard a woman talking. I had never been able to hear my neighbors talking before, but I figured they just happened to be talking in their bathroom, which shared a wall or something. When I got out of the shower, 
I was surprised to see a black void when there should have been the bright white closed door of my old roommate's door reflecting in the moonlight. I figured I just forgot to close the door and went and closed it. The next night, I once again went to take a shower and left my room and the bathroom door open. But this time I checked to make sure the other door was latching and the front door was double locked. When I came back out, I once again saw the void with the door wide open. I slammed my door closed and locked that SHT so fast. I convinced myself there was a logical explanation, so the next night I once again checked all of the doors and then closed my bedroom door. This time, I came out of the shower, and my bedroom door was open along with the other door. I showered and slept with my bedroom door locked from that point on. I guess this took place over several nights at home alone, and I may not have even been alone. Still the creepiest thing that ever happened, though. A few years ago, I lived in a two-bedroom apartment with my kids, who were 8 and 10 at the time. My kids slept in a bunk bed, and when we first moved in, they would fight over who got the top bunk, and my youngest usually won. Their room had a sliding glass door that led to our balcony, which overlooked some woods. They had thick blinds that were always closed at night, and nobody else shared the balcony with us. We also lived in a very safe, nice part of town with nice older neighbors. One night, I tuck my kids in for the night, read them a few stories, and they're falling asleep. I kiss them goodnight on their noses and go to bed myself in the room right next to theirs. About an hour later, my youngest screams bloody murder, and I hear a crash in their room. I jump up, running into their room, thinking the youngest must have somehow wiggled his way out of the top bunk. Sure enough, he's on the ground, head down, and still screaming. I try to calm him down and ask if he's okay, thinking we definitely need to go to the ER. He looks up at me, grabs onto me, and screams for me to take him out of there, so I go to the bathroom, which is right across the hall, and turn on all the lights to check him for injuries. He's fine. It turns out he jumped from the top bunk and landed fine. I ask him why in the world he did that, and he finally blurts out, to get away from the lady on the ceiling with the backwards head. My oldest was woken up by this point and was super annoyed at little bro, and I told him there was nothing to be afraid of. I finally calmed him down, but from that night forward, he absolutely refused to sleep in that room and insisted on going to bed with me, which I was okay with, but I did try to talk him into sleeping in his own comfy bed. Older bro even offered to let him take the bottom bunk permanently, but he wouldn't budge. A month goes by, and my eldest still sleeps on the top bunk. One night, he wakes us up by jumping off the top bunk, rushing into my bedroom, and jumping in the bed with me and my little brother. I ask him what's up, and he refuses to talk about it. I figure he must have watched a scary video or something that he shouldn't have at his cousin's house earlier, and I just patted him on the back and told him everything was okay and he's safe with me. So, all three of us guys are sleeping in my bed every night, and I try my best to get them to go back to bed in their bunks. My oldest finally told me he saw a shadow crawling on the ceiling that looked like a woman with long black hair. He said that he was woken up by a flashing white light and thought his brother was turning his flashlight on and off and on again, but when he looked closer, it was coming from the closet, and he saw the black figure crawling on the ceiling and ducking noped out of there. I was like, great, two kids who are scared of a monster in the closet. Well, a few nights later, on a Friday night or Saturday morning around 3 a.m., the boys are asleep in my bed, the oldest in the middle, the youngest on the far left next to my bedroom window, and I was on the far right, facing the open bedroom door. Normally we would close the bedroom door, but we had just had an epic Nerf gun fight before going to bed, and all the doors were open. It was a great night. Anyway, I'm lying in bed, snoring, when I suddenly wake up. I open my eyes, and as they're trying to focus, I notice a white, flashing light reflecting on the wall outside my bedroom. I think it must be one of their flashlights losing its battery power or something and I debate whether I really want to get out of bed and turn it off or just roll over and ignore it when I see the source of the light slowly moving down the hall, getting closer to my bedroom door. I immediately thought intruder and quietly got out of bed and crept towards the doorway, trying to see what was going on. I peek out into the hallway, and the light is flashing close to the ground from my kid's room. I don't hear footsteps, nothing. I look in their room, and the light stops. I'm freaked out, so I flip on the light switch and see nothing. Mice are chilling, nothing out of place, and I went over their entire floor looking for the source of that light and found nothing. We ended up moving out a couple of months later, and the boys got separate bedrooms and weren't afraid anymore. My oldest is 15 now, and I told him this story back in January, and he turned white as a ghost, went silent, and just stared at me. I was like, what's the matter, kid? He looked me dead in the eyes and said, you're lucky you didn't look up. So, I was once home alone in my loft bedroom, three floors up. It was winter, 
so all the windows were shut. We lived near an industrial park, and we must have had some really good windows and doors because, with the windows shut, no sound came into the house whatsoever. We'd not lived in the house for long, maybe a couple of months. I heard what sounded like an older lady's voice, not a creepy old lady, but a nice grandma from a Disney film, old lady, shouting, hello. Hello? I instantly assume somebody is shouting through the letter box, so hop up and head down the stairs. Just as I'm heading down the last set of stairs, I hear it again, hell Lou, but this time slower, and the tone is almost smug or arrogant. And to top it off, I can tell that the sound is now coming from above me in the house. The voice was inside the house. I obviously walked past whoever was on the middle floor. Instant terror meant I ran down the rest of the steps, noticing the front door was wide open. I lock it behind me, head round to my friends. The police turned up, found the property completely locked as I left it, couldn't find anyone in the house, and never found out who or what this was. Neighbors told police they'd heard her too right up until the police got there, and after 45 minutes, she had gotten incredibly loud, and it sounded to them like she was pressed against the wall, shouting directly into it, getting angrier and angrier. I still get goosebumps explaining this to people. I don't believe in the supernatural, but I've really struggled to rationalize this one. I was around 16 at the time and home alone. It was around 11 at night when I got home from work, and I was too tired, so I just decided to sleep on the couch. As soon as I drifted off to sleep, I felt a rush of terror because it felt like something had grabbed my ankle and pulled me off the couch. I hit the ground hard and immediately woke up 5 feet from the couch with my breath knocked out of me. I convinced myself that I just rolled off, but I called my friend and told him that he was going to spend the night. I had a bunk bed at the time, and he slept on top, and about an hour later, something grabbed the two blankets he slept with and threw them across the room. We were both scared to death, and that's why he won't sleep over to this day. When I was at university, my housemates and I lived in a really sketchy area. One weekend, all three of them were away, and I was home alone. Shortly after going to bed, I was woken out of a dead sleep by a sound I couldn't place. There was banging, not the good kind, crashing, and all sorts of commotion coming from the top floor. There is definitely someone or something up there. I happened to have a butterfly knife in my bedside cabinet, nightstand, and grabbed it, deciding I would be brave and deal with the problem. I was a short, skinny 19-year-old woman with no strength. Also, no clothing, because I didn't think to get dressed with all the adrenaline. I crept up the stairs and discovered the noise, which was getting louder and more frantic, was coming from my housemate's room. I called out, but there was no answer. I eventually plucked up the courage to turn the door handle, stepped back, and nudged the door with my foot, only to have whatever was in that room come flying straight out at me. Literally flying. It was a ducking pigeon. It took a couple of hours to get the ducking thing out of the window that had been left open and then calmed down enough to go back to bed. So it turned out not to be a scary thing, but the whole process of trying to find out who or what was in my house was pretty terrifying while it was happening. We had a large, empty bedroom that my parents were always going on about turning into various things, a guest room, a game room, a gym, etc., but never did anything with. It used to be my room before they kicked me out into the closet-sized third bedroom in order to never do anything with my old room, but that's by the by. It was always a creepy room, but it was even creepier now that it was empty. Unfortunately, it was right next to my new room, and I had to walk past it every time I wanted to use the bathroom or go downstairs. It had a really nasty atmosphere to it, and my mother insisted on keeping the door open so that the air could flow freely around the house or whatever. I'd try to avoid looking at it. I was home alone a lot when I was younger, and this time my parents were both away for around a week or so. Over the course of this time, that bedroom had been getting steadily creepier, and one evening I walked past it and couldn't help but look. I don't know why, I just looked before I could think about it. It was really dark in that room because, for some reason, the curtains were always closed, and for a moment I couldn't see anything. Then, as my eyes adjusted, I slowly made out a kind of mass in the top left corner of the room. It was huge filling up the whole corner, and it looked like it was constantly moving. Imagine if someone got a pen and managed to scribble in the air, just a huge mess of black lines all tangled together. It looked like that, just hovering there. I stared at it for a moment, and then I felt the most unbelievable sense of dread, and I reached out and closed the door. I didn't open it again until before my parents got back. I didn't mention it to them because I didn't think they'd believe me. The bedroom was eventually turned into a guest room, and wouldn't you know it? Everyone who slept in there had some kind of horrible experience they couldn't explain. Some people reported feeling uneasy or watching all night, 
Other people reported seeing an old man sitting on a chair in the corner of the room, there was no chair there. My mother, on several occasions, when sleeping in there so she didn't disturb my father getting up early for work, saw the old man in the chair and also saw him standing inside the mirror, banging his fists against the glass. I myself had to stay in there once, and I woke up with red scratch marks down the length of my leg. It was raining pretty hard one night, and I was about to go to bed. Our dog decided to start going nuts and barking in the corner of the family room. We had just moved in, so there wasn't anything in there, but she just kept constantly barking at nothing. I tried to pull her away, but she wasn't having any of it. She started showing her teeth and snarling, which she never does. I figured there must be an animal outside, so I turned on the deck lights, the deck is off the family room, and peered outside. Nope, nothing. I wasn't about to go outside because of the rain, and I didn't see anything anyway. So I dragged the dog to the bedroom, but she just won't shut up. I finally decided to get my shoes and umbrella on and walk around the house. I found one of my neighbors curled up along the side of the deck, trying to protect himself from the rain. He's disabled and a little slow. He usually goes out for walks in the neighborhood. He got caught in the rain and couldn't find his house. If my dog hadn't gone nuts, he might have been out there all night, and who knows what could have happened. My grandmother has two living rooms in her house. The one at the back is for general use, relaxation, or watching movies, and then one through the wall from her bedroom. This one is for parties and general family gatherings like New Year's, Christmas, or special birthdays. As a kid, both me and my sister hated that second, special living room. There was always an awkward feeling to it, a sense of something not being right. We'd have 20 people in there for a party, and we would avoid it as much as we could. I've been there a few times now that I'm older, and I still get this odd feeling of not quite being alone in there. I have no other way to explain it. It does, however, relate to the other story I've got. This was maybe a decade ago. My grandmother was in for an operation and was basically on bed rest for weeks after it. I'm 13? 14? At the time, I'd been asked to go down one weekend and spend the day with her, so she's not on her own and has someone to make her tea and help her to the bathroom. The way her house is set up is a weird L shape. She's lying in her bed, her back to the door, so she can see the whole room, and the wall opposite her has a very large, very ostentatious mirror on it. I'm in a chair at the foot of the bed, so I can see her, and then out the door and down the hallway. From here, I can see almost every other door in the house out of the corner of my eye, except the one into that second ducking living room. We're chatting when I clock movement in the corner of my eye. I look around, and I see what can only be described as a grey humanoid shape standing in the kitchen doorway. When I look directly at it, it's gone. It was so quick, and I only noticed it at the last second, I just assumed I was imagining it. Like a floater in the corner of your vision or something. Except my grandmother saw it too. She said she'd watched it in the mirror as it walked from the second living room, down the hall, and into the kitchen. I don't like hanging out in my grandmother's house longer than I have to. I used to live in a very old triple-decker in Dorchester, Massachusetts, and I'm convinced that someone died there at some point by having a heart attack and falling down the stairs. I know that's very specific, but a lot of weird things happened on those stairs, and I had a disturbing recurring dream while I lived there of standing on the stairs, having horrible chest pain, then falling, and that's when I woke up, just before hitting the floor. I would hear voices out in the stairwell right before I opened the door, and they would abruptly stop as soon as I opened the door. I was also followed around the house by a small, dark figure, but I couldn't tell if it was a child or something else. I would feel and hear it walk around behind me, and I'd see it peeking around door frames and corners. It didn't feel threatening, just curious. The weirdest experience happened when my boyfriend was with me, though, and if there hadn't been a witness, I don't think anyone would have believed me. We both saw a large, dark figure quickly back away from my boyfriend as he approached the third floor landing, I was on the second floor. The figure had been watching us from the railing, then backed into the far corner when my boyfriend went up the steps. He almost fell backwards in surprise, and we both screamed holy ducking shit and sprinted into the apartment. I never saw the large figure again, but I always felt like I was being watched in that house. I asked the landlord when I was moving out whether anyone had ever died in the house, and he just looked at me with wide eyes and said no, then dropped the subject. So, that's a yes. I live with my parents in a small house on a country road. We have two entrance doors, first into the hallway, second right into the house, and we leave them open so our cats and dogs can go out and back in whenever they want, and we close them only at night. In the second door, we have a net against bugs that closes itself by magnets in the middle when you walk through it, so you can walk through it with full hands or the cats and dogs can walk through it easily. 
Once, when I was home alone, I was sitting in my room, which is the furthest from the door, and you couldn't see the entrance. Throughout the day, I heard how the cats would walk out because I heard only two magnets of the net click, then a few times the dog, so three or four magnets clicked. But then I heard more clicks of the magnets, as if a person had walked through them. So I went to see if there was someone, maybe a postman, but I found nobody, so I went back to my room. But a few minutes went by, and I heard it again and again. I would always run to the door and then outside, but nobody was there. I still don't know what it was or how it happened. I was home alone one night in middle school. I was in my room, which is right above our kitchen, watching TV. I had already shut all of the lights off down the stairs because I was eventually going to fall asleep and didn't want to get yelled at for leaving the lights on. So I am lying in bed, and the family dog, a Chesapeake Bay Retriever, was lying next to me when I hear cabinet doors open and shut. It wasn't like they all open at once and then shut, but more like one after another for a few seconds. I freeze and look at the dog, who at this point was an old lady, who perked up and looked at me. I peeked out my window that looked over our driveway and didn't see anything. Now I didn't think anyone was in the house because, while the dog was lazy, she was a great guard dog, and she would have responded if the door opened or whatever. So after a few seconds, the dog gets up and starts moving towards the stairs, and I decide to follow, fully confident that if anyone was down there, she would scare them. I grab my softball bat and my cell phone and follow her downstairs. As we come downstairs, I notice the lights are on in the kitchen, and I dial 911 because I know I shut the lights off prior to going up the stairs. When we got into the kitchen, all the cabinet doors were open, which was obviously not how I left them. That's when I noticed that the door was still locked, so I thought whatever this was, it was still in the house. So I quickly ran upstairs to my parents' closet, called my parents, and told them what was up. They came home and obviously didn't find anyone or any trace of anyone being in the house. We still do not know why the light was on and the cabinet doors were open, but we had some other paranormal-like events happen around that time, so we chalked it up to the household ghost. I wasn't at home, I was working the night shift at a nursing home, I'm an RN, now disabled. It was just me and a CNA, and we were the only staff in the Alzheimer's unit. She had the TV on some stupid show about hauntings in America. She looks at me and says, you'd think nursing homes would be haunted a lot, because so many people die here. I just gave her a look and told her to shut up, this place is creepy enough at night. We went to do rounds on a resident who was in the process of passing. She was on hospice, and her family was aware. I checked on her every 15 minutes because I didn't want her to be in pain or to see if she was in distress. At this time, she wasn't in distress, but it was obvious she wasn't going to last much longer. Her family lived across the country and had requested not to be called pass 9 pm So, I stayed with her, held her hand, and read to her from the Bible, as she was a devout Catholic. After all of the aftercare was finished, the CNA and I had been in the room for 15 minutes, I left to call the funeral home and all of that. I barely dialed the phone number when the CNA came running down the hallway and said, she's breathing again. I don't know what to do. She was obviously freaked out, and her face was pale. I went to the resident's room, and she was definitely breathing. I checked my vital signs, and though everything was much lower than normal levels, they were there. I'd checked them several times after she'd passed, and there had been no blood pressure, no pulse, no anything. She lived for another five years and claimed she'd met God. This is the creepiest thing that has ever happened to me. I had just moved into my first apartment. It was around 8.30 p.m., and I heard the doorknob moving like someone was putting a key in it and turning and knocking. At first, I got really excited that my boyfriend was home, but then I realized it was only 8.30 and he was due home from work around 1.30. So I looked out the kitchen window and didn't see his car or anyone's car I had known parked outside. That's when I panicked. The doorknob kept moving for a few more seconds and then stopped. A few minutes later, they had some pieces of metal sticking between the door, trying to open it. I freaked out at that point, locked myself in the bathroom with a knife, and called 911. They tried to pry the door open for about three minutes before they stopped. The police swarmed the area and found an elderly man roaming around with a knife and a crowbar. He used to live in that apartment, and he wanted his stuff back that we stole when we moved in. I was told he was really delusional. I'm so thankful and glad I didn't answer the door once I realized it was no one I knew. To this day, my heart stops when someone knocks on my door. I was sitting in our living room watching TV one night, and no one else was home. In the kitchen, we have a refrigerator that has dual doors to open and a lot of decorations all over it, including a small magnetic chime thingy. I'm sitting there when I hear the chimes ringing slightly, 
so I muted the TV and listened, thinking maybe a family member was home. Nothing happened, so I turned the volume back up and kept watching TV. A minute later, I hear what sounds like someone sneezing in our kitchen, and it doesn't sound like any of my family voices. I tensed up and thought someone had broken into our home. I'm shaking at this point, but I'm being quiet and listening. A few moments go by, and I hear the refrigerator doors open and then slam shut so hard that I can hear the glass jars inside them rattling. I ran into the kitchen, ready to whoop someone's ass, and there was nothing. I told my family about it, and they said I was just paranoid, but we've had guests come over to the house and say it feels weird in there. I was a kid, around 10 years old, and I was babysitting my 7-year-old sister. We grew up near an insane asylum, and every now and then we'd get an escapee in our yard. They'd walk off the grounds and head through the woods towards the nearest big town. They'd get about a mile to our place and realize walking 40 miles to that town was probably not happening. So they'd ask to use the phone to call and get picked up by the hospital. This happened every now and then, but this was the first time it happened when I was home without my folks. The woman who arrived in our driveway wanted me to call the hospital to pick her up. But she also asked me if I had some matches, presumably to light a cigarette. I ushered my sister into the house and locked the door as I called. The woman was kind of half screaming and half moaning, matches. I need matches. Until they came and picked her up. I'm sure it was just for a cigarette, but it also could have been to burn us alive, so I didn't give her any. My family home is a 300 year old house. In all those years we've lived there, we never went up to the attic because the hatch to get up there is right above the stairwell, and the attic has no proper flooring. My then boyfriend used to make up stories about some kind of sick child living up there. There was a huge storm one day, so all the blinds were closed and the house was pretty dark. I was huddled up in the living room with my dog, but then I remembered I didn't know where the cat was. I was scared she could be outside in the storm, so I searched the house. The power and phone went out in the whole neighborhood, and I was a bit squeamish, so I called my boyfriend while searching the house. As I was walking up the stairs, I nearly shat my pants. The attic hatch was open, and there was light shining through the crack. Like on cue, my ducking phone battery went dead, so my call dropped. I went into full panic mode and just walked backwards to the living room and cried like a baby. The ducking cat was sleeping behind the sofa. It turns out there is a small window on the roof of the house, and the wind blew through the old house and lifted the hatch. I'm still glad I don't live there anymore. I will share the one that happened when I was about 11 years old. My parents and sister went shopping, and I was staying home with my dog. I was sitting in my room reading a book with my dog sleeping on the floor when suddenly the dog woke up and started gnarling at something in the corner of the room. At that time, I was sharing the room with my younger sister, her bed was located next to that corner, and there were a lot of toys and teddy bears on her bed, thus, at first, I thought the dog was barking at a teddy bear or something. I grabbed the biggest teddy and gave it to the dog to sniff, telling it to calm down. The dog was not interested in the teddy whatsoever, she kept looking at that corner, gnarling and barking, all her fur ruffled. This was the moment I realized something creepy was going on. The dog started approaching that corner, she attempted it about three times, jumping away and screaming with pain each time she got close enough, as if something had hit her. I've almost SHT myself, yet I managed to stay calm somehow and started talking in a raised voice, whatever you are, leave us alone, I don't want you to scare me anymore. Believe it or not, everything calmed down in that moment. The dog approached that corner once again, this time without screams of pain, and was sniffing it nervously for a longer time, yet there were no traces of anything there. I told my parents about it right away, and they came back. I was shaken, and I told them to never leave me alone there anymore. They've checked that room, but they told me the dog must have barked at these toys. I am pretty sure there was something there. That dog was always very calm and never acted that way, yet this time I think she was able to see, or at least sense, something I wasn't. The underlying sensation was that it was something evil, but I don't know if it's possible to label that. I thought so because the dog acted as if something was hurting her or not letting her come closer. I used to live in a classic Chicago bungalow from the 20s on the NW side, still have the house but moved to Iowa. Anyway, years ago my partner was away on vacation for a couple months, and although we usually rent out rooms to people, at this point the house happened to be totally unrented, and it was just me. I've never been afraid of the dark or prone to thinking anything was supernatural instead of just some weird coincidence or something. So this one evening I get home from work at about 8, and it's the middle of winter and it's been dark for hours, but I'm off the next day, so I decide to take a shower and head out to the bars for a couple. My room is in the front of the house on the lower garden level, and right above my headboard are the concrete stairs and front door. 
I've lived there for about six years at this point, and I'm super familiar with the sound of the mailman on the steps and people unlocking and opening the front door and coming in, and I could usually tell who it was from the sound. So I take a shower in the bathroom next to my room, head back into my room, and start getting dressed. As I'm pulling on socks, I hear footsteps on the concrete steps and, for sure, hear the door unlock and open. I know there's no one else who should be randomly coming in, as my partner is in South America and the bedrooms upstairs are empty. So I grab the aluminium bat I keep next to my bed and slowly walk into the room that is under the living room upstairs, and I can definitely hear footsteps through the floor above me, clear as day, heading in the same direction towards the stairs and kitchen in the back. All of a sudden the footsteps stop, right by the top of the stairs, so I rush up, ready to confront whoever it is, thinking maybe a former tenant made a copy of the keys, and there's nobody there. I walked around and checked all the windows and doors, and everything is locked, and there's no way someone could run out of there without me hearing them. It's always baffled me utterly. I was living with my now ex-girlfriend, and she went to work at 5am I got up, walked her out, and then locked the deadbolt. Since it was my day off, I went back to bed, closed our bedroom door, and laid down face first on the bed. While in the stage between awake and asleep, I hear the front door open. No big deal, our neighbors were our best friends, and sometimes they would come borrow some ingredients for food. But then I heard the bedroom door open and close and felt someone or something sit on the bed next to me and push me deeper into the bed. I couldn't move, I couldn't make a sound, and I was having a panic attack because of it. Then, out of nowhere, I was able to move, and the bedroom door was closed. I got up in a panic and checked the front door, which was still closed and locked. I called everyone I knew, and no one had been to our place that morning. That apartment always gave me a bad vibe, and we ended up moving not long after. I had just moved into a notoriously haunted neighborhood. It's an old mill town built in the 1900s. Everything still looks like it used to, just older and more rundown. The particular place that I moved into was the old church that they converted into apartments. When I moved in, I introduced myself to my neighbors, and they told me tell me if you hear any bumps in the night. Overall, I was pretty nervous moving in. I was sleeping one night and got woken up at 3 in the morning by my dog barking in the extra room. My dog never barks. I got up to see what he was barking at, but there was nothing there. So I ignore it and go back to sleep, but not 30 minutes later, he wakes me up again, barking and growling. I was so freaked out that I closed that room off, turned on all my lights, and locked me and my dogs in the bedroom. The next morning, I wake up and go to check it out. It turns out there were some kittens living underneath our house. My dog could hear them meowing and scratching about, and that's why he was barking. I don't believe in ghosts, but that was the closest I have ever been to actually believing. I haven't had a single bump in the night since. An 8-year-old me woke up on a really nice and bright August Saturday morning. I get up from bed to go get breakfast and say good morning to my mom and dad. I go to the kitchen, empty, I go to the living room, empty, and finally, I go to my parents' bedroom, also empty. At that point, I started slightly panicking. Then, as I walked back towards the kitchen past our front door, we lived in an apartment block, so it was only the door to the hallway, I realized the door was wide open. At that point, I freaked out and started crying in the doorway. Now, luckily, this isn't a sad story. Seconds after I started crying, our neighbor from the next apartment came over, she was a nanny and had taken care of me countless times, so that reassured me a little. Then I asked about my parents and was told my parents were at the hospital and I was getting a little sister. So this was, at the same time, one of the scariest experiences of my life and one of the best days of my life. A huge roller coaster of emotions. I was reading some SCP, for those of you that don't know, it's sort of a Wikipedia of all kinds of paranormal fiction world building type things. But this particular page was about this stairwell that seemingly had no end, and basically weird stuff would happen to anyone who tried to get to the bottom of the stairwell. A common thing that would happen is that after going down several flights of stairs, people would start hearing either a woman or a child's voice yelling for help, but the further down you went, the voice never appeared to be any closer. So basically, it would always sound the same distance away, no matter how many stories you descended. There was some other creepy stuff that happened, but it wasn't too important to the story. But basically, I had finished reading the SCP, and I was already pretty scared. Suddenly, I started hearing a woman yelling for help. I assumed it was the web page playing audio because sometimes the site includes small things like that, so I closed the web page. But the voice was still there. So then I panicked and shut down my laptop, but it was there still. Unplugging my speakers did nothing as well. At this point, I was practically shitting myself, 
so I wandered around my house, but I couldn't find the source of the woman's voice. I finally decided to nope the duck out and go outside, and finally the voice got a bit louder. After walking a few yards, I found out what it was. It turns out my neighbor got herself stuck on the roof, and the window shut behind her, so she had no way back, so she was yelling for help. I was, I think, 12 at the time. I'm not sure why I was home alone, my mom was probably working or something. I was laying in the master bedroom playing some crackdown on Xbox, I think. Ever since we moved into this house, I have always heard noises coming from the attic. Kind of like pounding or footsteps. And I always got a super creepy vibe in the master bedroom. The ceiling fan was slightly off center, so there was about an inch gap in the ceiling that went straight to the attic, and I shit you not, I would always get the feeling I was being watched when I was in there alone. So I'm playing crackdown, as I said. I peek into the walk-in closet and check to make sure the creepy ass attic ceiling tile thing is where it's supposed to be, and I shut the closet door. Then I grab some toilet paper and shove it into the gap in the ceiling. Your boy is safe to play his video games, right? Wrong. After about an hour and a half, I get up to go pee. The bathroom is right next to the closet, so as I'm walking over, I take a quick peek at the closet door. All is well. I start going to the bathroom, now I have a full bladder, and being a kid, I held it in until my legs were shaking like a 9.0 earthquake, so it takes a minute or two for me to finish up. I walk out of the bathroom, and the ducking closet door is opened, and I don't mean cracked open, the door is about halfway open. My soul left my body as soon as I saw that. I quickly walk over, turn the closet light on, thankfully it was on the outside of the closet, and look inside. All is clear, the attic tile was closed, so I figure the door just opened on its own or something. It was actually pretty windy, and the four windows in the bathroom were open, so it seemed possible to my 12-year-old mind. I close the closet again and wash my hands. As I'm walking back to my Xbox controller, I get the most insane feeling of being watched, and goosebumps shoot down my entire body. I instantly looked up at the ceiling fan, and the toilet paper I shoved in the gap to block it was gone and nowhere to be found. The fan wasn't on, the windows in this room were closed, and the wind from the bathroom wouldn't reach here. The fan was also right above the bed, so if the toilet paper had come loose and just fallen, it would be somewhere in sight. The room was spotlessly clean. I got the hell out of there, went to my friend's house down the street, called my mom, and told her. We moved a few days later.